The Bad Batch Season 1 Thoughts, the Star Wars show. So, let's dive right in. Right. Before I dive right in, uh, absolutely loved all episodes of this season, and there will be spoilers for this entire season and everything Star Wars leading up to this season throughout this video. So, episode one, Aftermath. So the title card starts as Clone Wars and then does the 1982 The Thing title reveal to change into the Bad Batch. I love this show already. Only five. And we get a reintroduction to the Bad Batch. Wrecker pulls a Schwarzenegger, pushes a tank. And we see Order 66. Crosshair wants to follow it. The others, not so much. This is not a drill. It's a screwdriver. You are more machine now than man, percentage-wise at least. I do believe we're reclaiming that one and not being ableist. Wonderful. Right, uh, some people apparently really hate Omega. I, you know, she's a, a sweet kid. I don't think she ruins the show or any some such thing. And Tarkin wants to shut down the cloning. Fascists discard anything they don't need without empathy. He doesn't see them as humans. I like that Omega, when one of the regs insults the Bad Batch, she demands they apologize, and we get a food fight slash regular fight. Nice to spend a little more time with Z. We're more deviant than defective. It's not about being able-bodied, it's about making the most of your differently abled body. Omega wants to take accountability. She fe she feels accountability able. And the test gets intense when they switch to live fire, but they reprogram one of the droids, manage to make it out. Very cool. Oh right, ah, uh, forgot to note. Not gonna get into the following every single episode section in this video, so I'm just briefly say. Every episode has great creativity and designs. The action is engaging, varied, and well choreographed. I'm invested in the stories and the characters. Let's see. And. Yeah, so. Yeah, and Tarkin values loyalty over intelligence. Again, fascist thinking. It is unacceptable to him that there are clone troopers re who refuse to shoot Jedi children when ordered to, despite having fought alongside them seconds earlier. Wrecker and Crosshair both cried because of the new armory. And Wrecker and Tech continue talking about programming versus free will. I approve. And they get to the supposed insurgents, see kids there. Saul Guerrero explains they refuse to fight for the Empire, points out the times and targets changed. Fascism, when it doesn't have a real external enemy, will target internal ones, sometimes both. And Crosshair and Hunter continue to argue, argue over orders. I appreciate how complex Crosshair is this season. And it is confirmed that Omega is a clone. The Bad Batch go back to free Omega, but end up surrounded. But they end up in the same cell as Omega, so that helped some. And, yeah, we see that Omega imitates the others, which is very, you know, a lot of children do that. It's not your fault. And they get out of the cell. Wrecker really hits the spot. I swear I made that joke before. I wrote down that joke in my notes before he makes that exact joke. I, a couple episodes later or something. Crosshair comes with them very intense. Seal the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't let you... Oh, wait. Seal them. Sure, you got it, buddy. Has the matter been rectified? Wow, that sounds painful. What are the ramifications? If they were a surfer... 
and yeah, Omega gives Wrecker back his doll. Very sweet. And episode two, cut and run. Omega finally fell asleep after apparently examining every inch of the ship. And I like seeing her reaction to the first time she sees natural sunlight, smells nature, touches dirt. We're all deserters now. I like seeing Omega play with the other kids. She's so happy when she catches the ball. And Cut points out how difficult being a parent is, which I appreciate. I'm not a parent, but I have parents, and yeah. We learn about chain codes, how it's a means of control, registering people. Can you fake one? Well, I only learned that they exist a few moments ago, but yes. And Omega goes past the fence, not knowing how dangerous that is, but the others rescue her. Kids find trouble, we have to protect them. Very true. <clears throat> Wrecker hits the R2. Very rare for me to be in favor of that, but have one try to arrest the kid, that'll do it. Very sad when Omega thinks she did something wrong, and that's why Hunter's trying to send her off. A lot of great tension in this episode. And that brings us to episode three, Replacements. Omega offers Wrecker ration. He's struggling to adjust to having a kid around, so he almost takes it, which of course makes sense for him being used to being around adult soldiers. You know, adult soldiers offer their rations. If, when <clears throat> when an adult soldier offers their ration to, some, to another adult soldier, that's like an equal thing. But, you know, you can't take food away from a kid, even if they're offering Wrecker misses Crosshair, although Crosshair certainly didn't miss Wrecker. He had a bullseye. And we meet the Elite Squad. So there's snarling beings crawling around a Star Wars property doing significant damage for their own gain. Oh, great. The Bad Batch crash land on the planet that homes the Phantom Menace. The one planet where what they say in their videos seems like it makes sense. I'm just kidding. There's no such planet. Nothing they say makes sense anywhere in any known multiversal anyway we don't leave our own behind you need behind to get ahead in life crosshair wants to execute the prisoners shoot the one elite squad who objects the rest of them follow his orders he is the ideal fascist tool really appreciate seeing darkness in an animated star wars show again after watching resistance not saying there was none, but not enough for my taste. And it seems, you know, they've basically, you know, there's darkness in both Clone Wars and Rebels. More so than Resistance, I mean. So it just seems like that's what they're going for, you know. With all of these animated shows of Star Wars in, you know, today in recent years and I like that Omega exchanges the flashlight for the fuse manages to leave without hurting the creature because the creature just wants something with what was it electricity or power in it you know she's not thinking like a soldier because she hasn't been trained to the bad batch you know have a tendency to and yeah, the admirals determined to continue clones improve them. And Wrecker reveals the room he made. Very sweet and showing that he has adjusted to having Omega around. Right, the room for her. I meant to say. 
Episode 4, Cornered. Sightseeing? You have to watch your language around the kid. <laughs> but isn't it good that the war is over? Depends on what side you're on. It is sadly true that when war ends, some people are hurt by the ending. Echo doesn't like having to pretend to be a droid to be sold. He definitely does want to be sold from you know, he does he doesn't want to be sold for only two thousand. And Omega sees one of those dogs from Resistance, so I guess that was a popular toy for them to be bringing back. And Bounty Hunter gets Omega some fruit. She approaches her without the helmet on to seem safe to be around. Great fight between Hunter and the Bounty Hunter. Let's see, which I guess, depending on where in the world you are, you're either going to think that means a hunter aboard a pirate ship or a hunter eating a chocolate bar. And the bounty hunter very easily takes that wrecker. It's one of those things where if you know what you're doing and you're not frightened by him, it's not difficult. He's too eager. You know, she's using his weight against him. So, yeah. You know, if she stood her ground and, like, tried to punch back, you know, that wouldn't work. Very exciting when they're going between the different flying vessels. Let's see. No, stop, wait. She hasn't paid me yet. And she pays him, says she's still looking for Omega and to contact her. Which brings us to episode 5, Rampage. Omega realizes who Sid is before any of the others. I appreciate how hardened Sid is. It makes sense for her character. Omega makes the doll she has of a regular clone trooper into a Bad Batch doll. I like that. Check the hold for clone kid daughter. La 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 la. I like when, I think it's Hunter, points out in code to Omega that she needs to get them their gear. Like, to the, you know, people who caught them, it sounds like he's just taunting. And because they know they have the control, the slavers don't care that they're being taunted. I love that she managed to unlock the cage before they discovered her. Baby Rancor. And we learn that's Moochie. Very cool when Moochie's fighting that big flying creature. Afterwards, fighting Wrecker. Takes a long time before Wrecker is finally able to subdue Moochie. I've seen some people say, oh, you know, I guess Moochie is going to replace the, the Rancor from Return of the Jedi. You know, the one that Luke kills. But, I mean, this is set before Return of the Jedi. Are we sure that this Rancor doesn't grow up to be... That Moochie doesn't grow up to be that Rancor? I mean, we don't know how fast these things grow. And yeah, the Bad Batch learned Bounty Hunter is Fennec Shand. I thought that might be her. And I believe it's the same actor doing the voice. Very cool. Although I guess for this one, she did not get to sit on a... Crap, I forget what they're called, but the big elephant-looking things, which apparently the actor really, really loved. Like, there's a Disney Plus behind the scenes where she's like, I can't believe I got to sit on one of them, <laughs> which is awesome. That's, you know, apparently she, like, grew up loving Star Wars or something, so that's really, really cool. <clears throat> and Sid makes it clear there's a standing offer for them to work for her. Episode 6, Decommissioned. Omega practices using the bow. Very cool to see more of Rafa and Trace. I know a lot of people didn't like their characters, but I did. Very intense, exciting fight against the police droids. Good soldiers. Uh-oh. Very intense when Omega falls into the disposal area. 
Is there an echo in here? Yes, I'm echo. I mean, they had to do that joke. I'm on my way. Does that mean he overcame the programming or accepted? I like that little bit of, you know, because like a lesser show would have had him just like shake his head. No, I'm not going to follow those orders kind of, kind of thing. But no, he just, he goes there and it's like, is he going to start killing his, his mates? Even though they kept their hands, they did lose the head. And the Martinez sisters talk to the Bad Batch about fighting against the Empire. Hunter does end up helping them. I thought you were one to know. Uh-oh. Episode 7, Battle Scars. Yeah, I, you can probably hear I have a little bit of a cold. Can't be helped. Too stubborn to not record. So, Sid is very greedy and manipulative, basically forcing the Bad Batch to work for her for very little money. The character is coded as Jewish. These are anti-Semitic tropes. Really gross. I guess I should have seen that coming when she's literally a lizard person. Rex shows up. He was the one that one of the Martinez sisters contacted at the end of the episode before this one. Points out the headache, the headache Wrecker has been having must be one of the because of the chips in Order 66. And then we get a joke that I have a soft spot for. For the others, Omega translates tech. Oh, wait, out of boundless bigotry, some conservatives say that trans is a word that should never be said. Um, she takes his words and makes them understandable to them. And then they transport, uh, I mean, they travel to where a bunch of ships have crashed. Does this mean that they're no longer going to be, that these conservatives are no longer be transmitting messages, transitioning between phases of their lives, make transactions? Let's see, very cool and creepy when Wrecker is dealing with the underwater creature. A Wrecker does succumb to Order 66, attacks the others. Excellent action. Of course it had to be the biggest, strongest member who succumbed. Omega runs while being chased by a big, strong guy and crawling under a partially open door, seemingly to safety. So we're in a level of outlast, basically. I approve. And after the fighting, Omega... Let's see. You saved some popcorn for Wrecker. Notify the Empire. Uh-oh. So yeah, like Resistance, there's a lot of, you know, at the end of an episode, there'll be a hint that something bad is coming. But at least something interesting happened during the episode, so I don't mind. Episode 8, Reunion. Crosshair is going to go for the Bad Batch. Wrecker sets off the countdown mine. Omega doesn't remember it all well enough to disable it. Thankfully, it was just smoke, not explosion. He's not quite that. It's, yeah. Exciting chase with the scrappers. Omega and Wrecker find a lot of explosives. Somewhere Sabine Wren is like, oh, come on, let me guess. Although I guess I, I'm not entirely sure. Has she been born yet at this point? I, yeah, probably not actually thinking about it. Anyway, or or she's like a small child, but she probably already loved explosives. I think her rattle was like, you know, yeah, some kind of explosive. Yeah, yeah, her, her rattle was actually a potato masher hand grenade. And Crosshair predicted them listening to comms and presumably on the way to the mission told the others that he would be speaking in code because of it. Very clever. And, you know, the code is simple enough. It's just opposite, you know. And the Bad Badge make the place collapse and Omega can now fire the bow properly. It would be weirder if you had. And the stormtrooper knows exactly where and how to touch and turns the engine on. Cad Bane, awesome. Hunter responds with some machismo of his own. And yeah, Cad manages to shoot Hunter but only stuns Omega, but he did survive. We get a POV shot leading into the ending of the episode. 
brings us to episode 9, Bounty Lost. We learn that Omega's DNA is pure, that's why some of the Kaminoans want her back. Which, I mean, I'm just going to double check that that's, no, I'm pretty sure, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, like, in real life, like, there's a number of conservatives who try to use trans people for their own ends, so, you know, to, to increase their power, maintain and increase their power, maintain the status quo, so, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm, I might be reading into it that it might not actually be that, but, you know, huge of true. Omega does repair Toto and then knock him out. Cad Bane catches up to Omega and Fennec Shan, and because they're both bounty hunters, they talk about a trade instead of him just attacking her right away. I appreciate that. It would, like, if that was, you know, if he was up against, like, a clone trooper, or, you know, a, a, reg, a reg, I mean, not a bad batcher, but yeah, you know, he might just shoot. But. This is like, he, he specifically says, you have no right to interfere with my bounty, you know. And Omega finds the botched clones. Evidently, she stepped into that one scene from Alien Resurrection that even people who hate that movie have to admit it's awesome. I don't love the movie, but I do think that if you just choose to try to watch it as basically like a parody of the franchise, I think it works. And Omega, of course, doesn't trust Fennec. Omega jumps on Toto and flies like that. Great bounty hunting action, as usual, for any animated Star Wars that features bounty hunters. Cad Bane can't get into the air because of sabotage. And we learn that Fennec was hired by Tan Wei against Lama Su. Lama Su, that name always makes me think that it's like a, a llama in court. And now I just really want someone to Photoshop that. We hear that the Empire has arrested senators in order to increase control. Fascism does away with democracy if it is not a useful tool for them. Love when the senator goes off script. And the protest is put down violently, something fascists do. And also something that is happening today, even in countries that don't have an outright fascist rule, you know, including America. Uh, you know, so yeah, it's very relevant for young people to realize that protests you disagree with are not inherently a bad thing, despite what conservative media would have you believe. Let's see. You know, it's not a, it's not, for, for one thing, it's not a violent protest, and, you know, violent protests under the right circumstances can be okay but it's the you know it's the the empire that's increasing the violence the senator's droid gets really good at distractions and takes pride in it i love it you know there's one bit where oh i'll do it i'll do it you know just, just yeah really really great omega quickly goes from being the third chess player that a number of matches have to gambling for sid and we go to the interrogation. Apparently, the center no longer has an excuse to wear a monocle. Unlucky guy. The droid saved the vase, but the center used it as a weapon. I never liked that vase. And we learn, which actually does mean, you know, it was actually good that the droid saved the vase in the short term, because otherwise the center would have had no weapon. And we learn that Omega managed to pay the debt. And Hunter and Omega are going to play. Are you ready? I was cloned ready. And this episode has great action. Really love the urban warfare. <clears throat> episode 11, Devil's Deal. What is the Devil's Deal? Very cool to see Ryloth and the Syndulas here at Chopper are arrested for spying. Tell me what you saw. Don't leave anything out. Uncle Gobi and Cham argue over how to handle this. 
And we see the first time Hira gets to fly. We know from Rebels that she becomes an expert pilot. And yeah, the Bad Batch transports some weapons, and Omega and Hira get along. That's really great. What feeling? He's believing. And they're arrested, transporting weapons back to the planet. The fact that she's only a child doesn't mean that Hira doesn't also get arrested. Which is also, a, you know, an important point. Like, immigrant children are being treated as badly as immigrant adults in America. You know, I, I would say, like, it's better for the legal immigrants, but they're also being treated really badly. Yeah, not not quite as badly. Let's see. And they they probably would be, you know, legal immigrants if the process wasn't so difficult for anyone who might make that argument. Very cool rescue scene, great cliffhanger. Just you you got to know what happens next. Which brings us to episode 12, Rescue on Ryloth. Omega manages to convince the Bad Batch to help. Very cool. Rescue. Love seeing Hera fly. Hauser warns. And let's see. Get some of them to drop their weapons and shields. And Tech has taught Hera how to scramble the ship's signature, something she does all the time on Rebels. And I like that, you know, when she tells, I think it's her mom, you know, Echo taught me how to scramble the ship's signature. She's like, show me, you know, just encouraging her instead of being like ah, you can't do that that's illegal you know obviously there are some things that you really don't want your kids doing that are illegal and some that aren't some that shouldn't be but this is a situation where it is uh, yeah and crosshair gets permission to hunt down the bad batch which brings us to episode 13, Infested. Roland is trying to take over for Sid. Cool to see him again. We have a slight infestation problem. I mean, it's big enough that the episode is titled for it. Great tension in this episode, such as when the flashlight is dropped, the chase for the spice, and the climax. And, yeah, I like the bit with, with Ruby. You know, they had to... <sighs> get the the um, ah what's it called yeah you know it it served a purpose but then they get captured and, yeah or you and your family will experience what pain truly feels like we're going to make you play the original trilogy lego games i'm kidding they're not that bad all the time. And we see how Roland got his horn cut off. And episode 14, War Mantle. I like how the chase in the opening is like, you know, the kids version of scary, you know, got all these close-ups of the, the chomping mouths of, of the, the Star Wars dogs and the, the creepy lighting. The be they debate whether or not to try to save Gregor. Wrecker has been put on point counting detail. They're almost done with the rescue when the ship loses power, and then Gonky the Gonk droid honking has Omega realize that that's the solution. Your clones don't impress me much. They're too shiny, though I do appreciate seeing Tamara Morrison get more work. And the politician is fired. Literally. Episode 15, Return to Camino. The platform being underwater is very, very cool. And once we realize this was where the 99s were mutated on purpose, it makes sense that it's secret. Didn't have a choice. And I did. Very cool to see a Z again. It's a trap! Where's Admiral Akbar when you need him to call that out? Find and catch that kid. I really like the interactions between Crosshair and Hunter in this episode. I love a well-developed villain who has a relationship with the protagonist. And Crosshair takes out the elite squad with the 
I forget what it's called, but yeah, you know, bouncing the projectile. Cool fight against the droids. I think it might have, you know, what was it, activated too many? I know that. I can see that. Don't worry, I'm not going to do the, I'm not going to try to do a, a Kiwi accent. I definitely do not. I would do a terrible job. Fire when ready, and we see the Star Destroyer emerge from Thunder Clouds. I mean, clouds. Very cool. I had my chip removed a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Wait, was does that mean the real world? Seriously, though, did not see that one coming. And a cliffhanger ending. Very, very cool. And that brings us to the finale, Camino Lost. So, yeah, very cool with the realistic-looking water. A, a lot of the time, maybe not every single aspect of it, but water is, like, that's one of the most difficult things to get right. You know, the, the specific way that it moves is one thing. The fact that everyone knows what water looks like and acts like is another, you know, just, yeah. We have to go to a space that's more secure, so definitely not Twitter or anything else run by a billionaire who has no contact with reality. Or in other words, a billionaire. So the kid's calling the shots now. Huh. Crosshair is embodying one segment of the reviewers. I'm not defending you. Understanding you does not mean that I agree with you. Exactly right. Let's see. And yeah, very, very cool with the giant creature and more great character moments between Hunter and Crosshair. Go away. Yep, Crosshair is definitely embodying the one segment of reviewers who absolutely hate Omega. So Aziz is, you know, underwater, Aziz is getting people out of the way of falling debris. Like an underwater robot Spider-Man, which, now that I say those words out loud, I definitely want that to be a thing. Please make the next Spider-Man movie, if not center on, at least feature, an underwater robot Spider-Man. But yeah, it was also a very cool scene. And Aziz dies, I guess just the battery for now, and Omega is sad and goes to the rescue, which just, yeah. And Crosshair saves Omega and Az. Does not join the bad batch. I really do appreciate like it's it's a great what's the word? Like for a second we think he's going to shoot Hunter. And then, you know, moves the, the rifle slightly and then uses the, which, you know, we, we've seen him use the, that, that the sniper has the thing that can, you know, fire off this, this retractable thing. You've seen that before. So, yeah, that was season one. And, yeah, um, briefly updating the, the ranking Worst to best, you know, other than Resistance, I love all these. They're all amazing. I'm ranking how much I love them, not whether or not I love them all. So, yeah, um, at the very bottom, Resistance Season 1 and then Resistance Season 2. And then for a good chunk of it, it is basically each of the seasons of these, you know. So, yeah, Clone Wars, then Rebels. You know, each season is better than the last, and then at the at the very end, you know, yeah, I think Bad Batch, you know, Bad Batch season one is better than those others. But having already watched season one of Visions, I do think that slightly, you know, it's yeah, is is slightly better. But yeah, this is whether we're talking about the overall season, the season opener, or the season finale. But yeah, very very excited to see more of this. So yeah, there's an there's one entire season 
left of the Bad Batch already completed. One more forthcoming. And let's see. So so yeah, um I am anticipating next week I'll do season two of Visions, and then the week after that, season two of the Bad Batch. Let's see. And yeah, uh let's see, Tales of the Jedi. And then Young Jedi Adventures, and then I'll be caught up on everything animated Star Wars that's recent, at least. I'm not ruling it. I might do droids and Ewoks at, at some point. You know, I'm not sure they're, like, canon or, or anything, but at this point, it's like, I mean, there's not that many episodes. They're on Disney+, Plus, so I wouldn't be spending any money, just time. Yeah, I I probably will just so I'll have done absolutely everything animated Star Wars, but yeah, um, that is it for this one. So yeah, um, right. I guess I'll just briefly say I I really really appreciate that we have a trans clone now that that Omega is female, though the, the rest of the clones are male. Uh, you know, and I find it kind of sad that some people absolutely freak out over that. But, okay, but but yeah, the... the um, I'm, I'm trying to listen for it, because there's supposed to be, like, thunder, but again, too stubborn not to record, so I'm just going to make sure to stop before it gets too bad. But that wasn't thunder, that was just wind that I heard. But yeah, the... the um, you know, we really need more of this positive representation. You know, there was such a long period of time where depictions of trans people in movies and TV shows were almost always negative. You know, it's, I already mentioned relatively recently in a video, but yeah, it was incredibly hateful in something like the um, Do Where's My Car, Ace Ventura 1. And the the third, I forget what they're called, but I'll have it momentarily. Leslie Nielsen, R.I.P. Um, the third of those movies, and those movies were called Naked Gun, right? Yeah, Naked Gun three had a a really really hateful depiction of a. Of a trans character, so so yeah, but the yeah, so so great to see that we are now getting some positive ones. I I knew that before watching the show, but yeah, you know, it it can help normalize it, and that's something we badly need. Like right now, they are being discriminated against uh, through through laws that are passed to just make their lives miserable. You know, the the. Um, I think I will just briefly note because I okay what I'm hearing now is rain still not thunder um let's see I probably have them yeah let's see I'm gonna try to find this really quickly um, and in the meanwhile, I guess I will say that the, um, hmm, let's see, this might actually be it. Right, here we go, yes. When you look at studies, you see trans, trans people who get to transition and have a support network are much happier the closer they get to having fully transitioned and after that than if they try to repress their desire to transition. And the same, same thing for guy, gay, bi, pans, who are able to live out of the closet. I don't know if this is the best metaphor, but you do see the same in people who are able to get out of toxic relationships, people who are able to overcome addiction. You know, let's see, you know, you know who isn't happy even when the people around them are not telling them that they cannot be who they are? 
a lot of cishet white conservatives, especially the ones who have very regressive views when it comes to minorities, including the women in their lives and repress the sexuality of themselves and those around them. Honestly, maybe that is part of, you know, why these people, you know, they, they see LGBTQ people, LGBTQIA people who are happy the way that they are, and these conservatives end up resenting them. I'm not going to make the rather dubious claim that all bigots deep down wish they were LGBTQIA, like the people they hate, but I will say it appears that they may wish that they were happy like LGBTQIA that are out and have a support network. See, it can really mess with your mind if you aren't happy even though you're doing everything you've been told would make you happy. And you're seeing these people who are happy even though they're doing things that you've always been told would make you miserable. And on that note, I will end this video. So may the force live long and prosper.